Good morning. Well, here we are. It's finally Christmas Day. Merry Christmas to you. I just uh, beat all your relatives in saying Merry Christmas first. It's a, it's a, a funny thing thinking about Christmas. Uh, I've just been reflecting uh, this week about how different the stages of life are on Christmas Day compared to when you're a child, compared to when you're a youth, compared to when you're a young adult. I'm, I'm now 30 now. And uh, Christmas is so different, isn't it, like in your, your experiences of depending on how old you are and what's happening at the time. And I think I want to recognize, too, that in the room today, we're all on different journeys on Christmas. Some of us uh, are experiencing Christmas uh, perhaps for the first time, and I'm thinking particularly my son Xander is four years old now, and this is the first time he's going to really remember Christmas. And then you've got others for whom it might be, uh, the last Christmas that we experienced, uh, and, and again in my family, Elisa's grandfather uh, has just been told uh, on Monday that this is going to be the last Christmas that he sees. And it's really interesting, isn't it? Like we're all on different journeys, but we're here on Christmas Day, we've, we've paused, we've stopped, and it is a time where we can reflect and celebrate on the Lord Jesus. And I've been thinking about this day in particular, and now I know that I, I'm kind of guessing what this is going to mean for you today, this this time, and and, and I'm just uh, I'm just going to throw it out there. I'm being stereotypical, but I'm guessing that there's about three different types of things happening for three different people in this room. So if you're hosting Christmas, I, I, I'm betting that you're here this morning, but maybe you're not really here. You're hosting Christmas, and I can imagine you're, going, you're probably right now going through every list of everything you need to do by the time you get home and make sure you put the roast on or turn the roast off or whatever it is. Uh, you're springing into action, and you're probably thinking, you know, I've got to make sure that the kids do what I tell them to do, and, you know, I've got no time for error. Maybe you're the one who's hosting Christmas, uh, and... There's just so much pressure there, isn't there? And and you're thinking, next year it's not me. The second person in this room might be the person who's not hosting Christmas. Uh, so maybe you're the attendee of the day. You're, you're going to a relative's uh, family, uh, and you're uh, you've been you've been given a list of what to bring, and so you are with us today. And after today, you'll get on with preparing those things, and you'll head over. Uh, to the greater gathering and joining the fun. Now, so there's there's two of three different people in the room, but maybe you're in the third category, and I suspect uh, that this category consists of mostly men, uh, youth, and perhaps children, who are thinking that today is going to be all about putting their feet up, eating a lot of food, and not helping much with the cleanup. Well, I've been married for six years now, I mean, let me tell you, only one of those things will be true. You'll probably eat a lot of food. Make sure, if that's you, friends, uh, that you get in the kitchen after Christmas lunch. My wife tells me um, everyone likes to ask for help before lunch, but you really need the help after lunch. So make sure you get in the kitchen after Christmas lunch, do the clean-up, and uh, look after your family as well. Today is the day we celebrate Christmas. On Sunday, uh, just gone, I, I preached on Philippians 2, verses 5 to 11. And today, I'm preaching from Philippians 2, verses 1 to 4, which is a passage just before uh, the one I preached on Sunday. And on Sunday, we reflected on, on why Jesus came. Jesus, God incarnate. We've been doing this uh, throughout our whole Christmas services, really. The fact that, that God left his home in glory... And he became flesh. He became one of us. He came to the lowest of lows and became man. And that is Christmas, isn't it? It's, it's an, a remarkable story that God would give up his home in heaven for a time to, to relate with us, to be one of us, to be a sinner's friend. It's, it's about the realization, Christmas, that, that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, left his home and came down to be with us. And we did all the heavy lifting of why we celebrate Christmas uh, on Sunday. So we're going to change gears now. And I, and I just want us to think briefly about uh, this one thought. How do I get through Christmas Day? 
how do I get through Christmas Day? I mentioned that we're all in different headspaces. So how do I get through Christmas Day looking out for not only myself, but for the interests of others? How do I let the humility that Jesus showed by leaving heaven for, for us, how do I let that humility overflow into my life and into my relationships? Uh, with those at church, yes, and we'll, but also with those in my family and with close friends that I'll see today. And, and I think this is a really important question for us to think about today because I don't know what your family gatherings are like, but I know what mine are like. And sometimes it's tough. Sometimes it's tough. It's supposed to be a joyous celebration, but sometimes it's tough getting together with family and being all buddy-buddy with them when you might not get along with them as well as you'd hoped. Um, maybe you've got an aunt or an uncle who's an antagonizer. I know I've got plenty. And uh, as soon as you see them, you, you kind of clench your fists a bit and then you put on a fake smile. They don't mean to, but they just rub you up the wrong way. Now, I'll tell you what it is for me. I, I'm being vulnerable here, so please don't hold this against me. I'm going to sound like a broken record, but most of you here know that I love the Richmond Football Club. I love the Tigers. Uh, we've had another excellent year. Two out of three flags ain't bad. Things are going pretty well for us. Now, I have a couple of family members who undoubtedly, almost every time I see them, it doesn't really matter, they will mention that Richmond was lucky to, to win the premiership both years. They just, they just know how to get under my skin. And, and all the time, all the time, I get... The old, don't worry, Richmond will end up ninth next year. It's an antagonist to the max, isn't it? It, it? it makes my blood boil. Now, what do I do in that moment? Well, culture's got a few ideas on how I could handle this. Uh, perhaps you as well. And, and, and most of them include uh, having a good time and drinking more wine. Or you could let them have it, but... You know, it always uh, pretty much never works. So I don't recommend to deal with it the way that culture would. So friends, how do we get through Christmas? How do we get through Christmas Day looking out for the interests of others? Enter Philippians chapter 2, verses 1 to 4. I'm going to read this for us now. If you have any encouragement from being, being united in Christ, if any comfort from his love, if any fellowship with the Spirit, If any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and purpose. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, but in humility consider others better than yourselves. Each of you should not look out only for your own interests, but also to the interests of others. Actually, I might even tag verse 5 along with that. Uh, Verse 5 says, Your attitude should be that the same of Christ Jesus. So Paul says, uh, if you've got any encouragement from being a Christian, if you've got any comfort from the love you have and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, if you've got any tenderness and compassion, verse 3, do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, but in humility. Consider others better than yourselves. And verse 4, look not only to your own interests, but also to the interests of others. So here's Paul's recommendation of how we get through Christmas Day together. How do we get through Christmas Day looking out for the interests of others? Well, there there are two key phrases from verses 1 to 5 that I want to pick up this morning. And they're so closely connected that we'll actually see that they're they're talking about the same thing. So verse 3, in humility. In humility, we are to consider others better than yourselves. And verse 5, your attitude. Your attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus. Now, what was Christ's attitude in coming down to heaven from us, for us? He left his home in glory. He left uh, complete and utter worship, rule, reign. He was, he was uh, being worshipped as creator God. He left all of that and came as a baby. Now that is absolute humility. He gave up all that he had to relate with us. 
So how do I get through Christmas Day looking out for the interests of others? I look to Jesus. He gave up everything for me, and so I can give up my own attitudes for others. Our attitudes, they have to be the same as Jesus' attitude. Paul says, Jesus was the humble servant. He came humbly. He gave up his rights. And we are to act in humility. We need to give up ourselves, give up our pride. Because that was what Jesus did. In humility, he, he left heaven. God in flesh. And he died for sinners. And I think that's our challenge today, friends. Looking to Jesus as our example. He came humbly. His attitude was humility. He did it for us. And I think we can do it for others. We are to model Jesus in our lives today. To those around us. To our friends and our family. But that's not just today's challenge, is it? That's a challenge for today. But today's the only the beginning of that challenge. This is this is a if, if you're a Christian here this morning, this is a, a rest of your life challenge to give up of yourself for the sake of others. We need to look to Jesus and His attitude and His humility in coming down for us and giving up of Himself, and we are to do likewise because Jesus has shown us that humility. I want to encourage you. Maybe this is the time to challenge yourself to Christ's example of humility in your life further than today. In the life of our church and in our community, when you see those around you that perhaps you don't get along so well with, remember your attitude should be the same as Christ Jesus. What relationships do you need to be more humble in and work on? And in the life of your relationships with your family and your friends, and as we enter the new year and beyond, What do I need to work on to show others Jesus' example of humility through my relationships with them? Friends, we look to Jesus. His attitude, his humility. What he was willing up to give up to save us is what we need to be willing to give up for others. Jesus is our focus. And so, friends, I pray that today throughout all of today and entering into the new year, you will remember the humility of Jesus, God incarnate, God giving up heaven, becoming flesh for us. And he became the sinner's friend. And so today and throughout the new year, may we look to Jesus, the greatest example of humility, and model that in our lives. Will this inspire you in your journey with humility with others? And may you have the same mind as the mind of Christ. Amen.